Hey y'all, welcome to another week of Coffee and Composition. I'm April, for those of you who are just joining us, and I'm the president of A Little More Truth, LLC. And this is our series to take the woes out of your next writing assignment. So we are nearing the end. We are almost at the finish line. I hope that you didn't sweat too much with the toolman last week because we are going into something that I'm really excited to share. It's the type of argument that's actually gonna be making its debut with a little more truth and we talked about it in our intro this year our welcome back video this year so this is going to be a two-part series and this week we're going to do part one of the narrative argument and you may be like hmm i don't think i've ever heard of the narrative argument again that's because i'm excited to debut it as something that a little more truth has helped to develop and we are excited to just share it with y'all so stay tuned grab your coffees and let's get started with the narrative argument this week. All right, so we're near the end of the season, but we're going to finish us out on a fun, creative, strong note for arguments. But as always, if you feel like you need more help, contact us at a little more truthllc.com and we would love to help you with your writing projects. So what is the narrative argument? It focuses on the story arc of an argument. Its goal is to captivate and convince the audience through the art of storytelling. When is it best to use this argument? When you are trying to gain buy-in from your reader on a topic that they're unfamiliar with. So let's create an outline for it. You wanna start by writing down the central conflict. Then you want to jot down where you stand on the conflict. Go into briefly discussing how you use pathos, logos, and ethos, that's the rhetorical triangle that we talked about earlier, to tell the story of the central conflict. Draw out the narrative arc of the story you're trying to tell and I think about two to three ways you can support your argument through imagery and diction. So that's the pictures and images that you create with your words and the words that you use. That's what diction is. Then create strong topic sentences for each of your supporting points. Finally, think about a central image that portrays your argument, then paint the picture with your words. So creating a thesis statement. You wanna provide a little context for your subject matter, i.e. the once upon a time of the story. Then state your main idea, relying primarily on pathos to draw your reader in, which is different from any of the other arguments. I really want you to start with pathos, start with the emotions to draw your reader in. <clears throat> in that same sentence, discuss the additional rhetorical appeals you'll use to prove your claim. So you don't want to just use pathos in the narrative argument. You want to use additional rhetorical appeals. Then in a separate sentence, map out the flow of your supporting points, kind of like a mini movie trailer. So have fun. This thesis statement allows for a lot more creative license than that of your typical argument structure. So have a little more fun with this thesis statement. Now let's organize this essay. It is all about storytelling and allows for some flexibility, but you still want to have a structure to it. You can organize your essay in either a standard linear fashion or a more circular one. So if you remember with the <coughs> classical essay it was all about the logic of the flow. You can stay with that kind of linear logic or you can do a more circular um, way of organizing the essay. The key is to make sure you follow your narrative arc, exposition, rising action, climax, falling action, and resolution. You wanna follow that arc no matter if you do a linear fashion or a circular fashion to organize your essay. Then you wanna use strong topic sentences to guide your reader through each chapter of the essay and finally use the resolution to reinforce your thesis with an image that is strong and compelling. So the key takeaway for the narrative argument, again, it's different from all the other arguments in that it allows you a lot more creativity, but the key is the creativity and the art of it does not allow you to sacrifice truth for entertainment. It still requires a strong thesis statement and supportive evidence. So you're not creating a movie trailer you're not creating a fairy tale story or fiction story. You're still crafting an argument. So you still want to have truth and supporting evidence in your essay. You don't just want to entertain with this one. Okay. So be careful, play with it, have fun with it, but don't sacrifice truth for entertainment. All right. I will see you all in the next video.